The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. Up to this point, We've only used the serial monitor to display data from the Arduino on our computer monitor. Now we're gonna use that serial monitor to send data to the Arduino. This can be used to create menus, calculators, and password logins. To get a user's input from the serial monitor, there are just three things you need to do. The first step is to ask or prompt the user for the information you want to get from them. This will be a question like, how many times do you want the LED to blink? or choose an option from the menu. It's just text to tell the user they need to enter something. To make the text for the prompt, use serial.print. You'll need to know in advance what data type the user will be entering. Users can input either an int, a float, or a string. We'll come back to this in a minute. The second thing you need to do is use the function called serial.available in an empty while loop. Serial.available returns the number of bytes available to read from the serial port. So if there is no user input, serial.available will return a zero. When the user inputs data and presses enter, serial.available will return a non-zero value. We use it in a while loop to make the program wait until there is an input from the user. The condition of the empty while loop is serial.available equals zero. So when there is no input from the user, serial.available returns a zero value, and the condition is true. So the sketch stays inside the while loop until the user inputs something, and the serial.available function returns a non-zero value. The final thing to do is read the information entered by the user and perform an action based on that input. To do that, we have to parse or read the information stored in the serial buffer. To parse the information stored in the serial buffer, we can use one of these three functions serial.parseInt, serial.parseFloat, and serial.readString. The data type of the information input by the user determines which one you should use. If the user will be inputting an int, use serial.parseInt. If the user is inputting a float number, use serial.parseFloat. And if the user is inputting a string, use serial.readString. But before you can use these functions, you need to declare a variable to store the parse data. The data type of that variable needs to match the data type of the input data. For example, to parse an integer, you would declare an int variable and set it equal to the serial.parseInt function. To parse a float, you would declare a float variable and set it equal to the serial.parseFloat function. To parse a string, declare a string variable and set it equal to the serial.readString function. Let's see how this works with a few examples. Let's write a sketch with a menu that asks the user which reading to display from a barometric pressure sensor. To make the sketch easier to understand, I haven't included the code for the sensor. But later on in the course, we're going to learn how to set up a BMP-180 barometric pressure sensor. And once you watch that video, it'll be easy to incorporate the sensor code into the sketch. First, we declare a few variables to store the sensor readings. So I have int variables for temperature, relative humidity, and pressure. 
In the setup section, we start by initializing the serial monitor with serial begin. Then I have a few serial prints with the menu options. Option 1 will be temperature. Option 2 will be humidity. And option 3 will be barometric pressure. I want each of these to be on separate lines, so I'm using the serial.println function. The goal is to have the sensor value printed to the serial monitor when the user selects one of these choices. Now onto the loop section. The first thing to do is prompt the user to enter a menu choice. So we have a serial print line with the text, which sensor would you like to read? Now we need to wait for the user to enter a selection. We do that with an empty while loop. Here's the while loop. The condition is serial.available equals zero. The serial.available function returns the number of bytes that are sent from the serial monitor. So until the user inputs a one, two, or three, the function will return a zero and the sketch will stay in this while loop. When the user does enter a selection, serial.available will return a non-zero value. So the sketch will exit the while loop and continue on with the rest of the sketch. Next, we need to read the data that was entered by the user, and to do that, we need to parse it. Since this is a menu, the user will be entering an integer to make the menu choice. So we need to use serial.parseInt. Let's store that parse data in an int variable called menu choice. So now we've prompted the user to enter a menu choice. We've waited for them to enter a selection, and we've parsed that selection and stored it in a variable. Now all we need to do is make something happen with that input. Since we have three different menu options, we could use three different if statements to control what happens when the user enters a selection. But a more efficient way would be to use switch case. So here I have a switch statement with the menu choice variable in parentheses. Then I have three different case statements, case one, case two, and case three. If the user enters a 1, the sketch will execute the code in this case statement and print the reading from the temperature sensor. I haven't included the code to read the sensor here, but this is where it would go. Then we have a serial print that says the temperature is, and a serial print line to print the temperature sensor reading stored in the temp variable. If the user enters a 2, the sketch will execute the code in this case statement. This is where the code to get the humidity reading from the sensor would go. Then we serial print some text that says the humidity is. The humidity reading will be stored in its own variable. In this case, we'll call it RH for relative humidity. That gets printed next. If the user enters a three, the sketch will execute the code in this case statement, which would read the value from the barometric pressure sensor and print it to the serial monitor. If the user enters a number other than one, two, or three, we can use the default statement to print an error message that prompts them to enter a valid number. So in the default statement here, I have a message that says, please choose a valid selection. Let's see what this looks like. So the three menu choices have printed out here. And here's the prompt asking which sensor reading I want to display. I can enter one to get the temperature. Two to get the humidity. And three to get the barometric pressure. If I enter a different number like eight, I get the error message. Okay, now let's see an example of where we get a float data type from the user. This sketch is a calculator that will convert a weight in kilograms to pounds. First, we need to initialize the serial monitor. Then we print some text saying, this is a kilograms to pounds calculator. In the loop section, 
we put the prompt that asks the user to enter a weight in kilograms. Then we have an empty while loop with serial.available equals zero as the condition. That's going to make the sketch wait until the user enters a number. Then, since the result of the calculation could be a fractional number, we declare a float variable called weight kg and set it equal to the function serial.parse float. Next, I serial print the weight kg variable so it appears on the monitor after the user presses enter. This is where we do the math to convert kilograms to pounds. There are 2.2046 pounds in a kilogram, so I need to multiply the weight kg variable by 2.2046 to get pounds. And we store that value in a new float variable called weight pounds. We serial print a little text that says the weight in pounds is, then we serial print the weight pounds variable. And that's it. Let's check it out. Let's enter a weight here, say 55.48 kilograms. I press enter, and the sketch returns 122.31 pounds. Okay, good. That's correct. Now let's see how to work with string inputs. This sketch is going to prompt the user for a password. If the password is correct, it'll print password correct. If the password is wrong, it'll print password incorrect. The first thing I need to do is define the password. So I declare a string variable called password and set it equal to the password I want to use. I initialize the serial monitor in the setup section. In the loop, I have a prompt that asks the user to enter a password. Then I have the while loop with serial.available to make the sketch wait for the user to input the password. The password is a string, so we need to use serial.readString to read the string from the serial buffer. I store that in a string called input. Now we just need to compare the password the user inputs to the password we defined here in the sketch. This is a good place for an if-else statement. So I have if input equals password as my condition. Inside the if block, I serial print some text saying password correct. In practice, this is where you could do something like set a digital pin high to turn on a relay. If the password input by the user doesn't match the password we define in the sketch, this else block will get executed. Inside that, I have some text that says password incorrect. Let's try this out. The password we defined in the sketch was A, B, C, D, E, F. So let me enter that. Okay, here's the message saying password correct. Let's try a different password. That's not the right password, so we get the message saying password incorrect. Hopefully by now you're starting to see ways you can modify some of these sketches to work in your own projects. In the next video, we're going to look at compound operators. As we saw in the video on loops, compound operators can be used to automatically increase or decrease values in variables. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.